The DevExpress Grid Control for Silverlight allows you to save its layout information to a data store and reload it when required. This information may include the visibility, position and size of visual elements, filter, sorting, grouping, and summary information, and more. You may also specify which setting to save and restore, as well as whether to save it into the isolated storage or as a separate XML file. In this video, we'll take a look at the basics of layout persistence for the DX Grid. We'll create and bind a grid control to a data source and persist its layout and view settings to the Silverlight isolated storage. So let's get started. I'll start with an empty Silverlight application project. To save time, I've already created the data entities model and the domain service for the data source to be used with the DX grid control. First, let's create the main layout of this demo application. From the toolbox, I'll drag and drop a new DevExpress layout control. I'll set it to fill the entire available area of the page. I drag and drop a layout group control and set it to stretch horizontally. As this group will contain the buttons for saving and restoring the grid's layout, I'll give it an appropriate caption. Next, I'll add two buttons to the group. I select both buttons, reset their width, and set them to stretch horizontally. The first button will be used to save the layout. The second one will load the saved layout from isolated storage. Now that the basic layout is done, let's go ahead and add the DX grid control. I'll position it below the layout group and set it to stretch horizontally and vertically to fill the available area. Next, I'll configure the grid. I enable the Auto Populate Columns property so that columns are created and populate automatically based on the dataset schema. The Auto Width property of the table view ensures that columns are fit inside the width of the grid control. Finally, I'll set the Show Filter Panel Mode property to Show Always to display the filter panel at the bottom of the grid. And I'm done with the UI customization and can continue with code. I'll double-click each button to create a handler for its click event. First, I'll add the following assembly references. The first two lines are necessary for binding the grid to data using RIA services. The second one is needed for file operations as well as working with the Silverlight isolated storage. I add a new instance of product context. Next, I add the following code to retrieve the data and load it into the Silverlight DX grid control. Now I'll create two string variables that'll specify the file and folder name to be used to store the layout inside the isolated storage. Having such a storage structure can be useful if you plan to store multiple layout settings and access them at runtime through code. For the first button, I'll add the following code. This will locate the user store, create the specified folder if it doesn't already exist, and finally use the save layout to stream method of the grid to save the layout settings as the specified XML file inside the isolated storage. The next button will use the restore layout from stream method to load and restore the previously saved layout settings in the grid. And we're done. Let's run the application to see it in action. So here is the grid populated with data. I'll go ahead and group the data first by the product name, then the discontinued columns. I click the Filter Editor button on the Filter panel. Let's apply a filter where only products that have a unit price higher than $20 are displayed. Now let's go ahead and save the grid's layout to the Silverlight isolated storage. I'll manually undo the grouping and remove the filter. I click the Load Grid Layout button and all of my previous layout settings, including the grouping and filter criteria, are restored in the grid. Thanks for watching, and of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress.